This video is brought to you by PHPStorm. As a back-end developer, I'm not always up to date on what's going on in the front-end world, but I occasionally have to dabble in front-end development. When that happens, I like to make sure that the libraries I'm using make my life as easy as possible. One of the front-end libraries that have been making a big splash in the community lately is the HTMX library, which makes it a snap to work with JavaScript without leaving the comfort of our back-end code. In this video, we'll discuss what HTMX is, how to install it into your project, and what it can be used for. Hello, developers, and welcome to the PHP Architect channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Scott Keck Warren, and on this channel, we discuss a wide variety of topics related to the PHP ecosystem. Make sure you subscribe so you can get our latest videos when they're published. To start, HTMX is a JavaScript library that gives us helper attributes that we can add to our HTML that gives us easy access to AJAX, CSS transitions, web sockets, and server-side events without having to write a single line of JavaScript. This allows us to build modern user interfaces without getting bogged down in a lot of JavaScript code. HTMX is incredibly small, weighing in at about 14 kilobytes after it's been minimized, and it doesn't require any dependencies, so it won't bog down our site with a bunch of extra HTTP requests. The HTMX website claims it reduces code base sizes by 67% when compared with React code bases. I can't account for that, but I could see that happening. Installing HTMX is as simple as including it in your HTML, and you can start using it with zero configuration. If your project uses NPM and Webpack, it can be installed using NPM and then imported in the standard way using Webpack. The core functionality of the HTMX library is the set of attributes it enables that allows us to issue asynchronous JavaScript and XML or AJAX requests using HTML attributes instead of JavaScript code. This includes being able to make get, post, put, patch, and delete requests to any URL by just prefixing those actions with HDX. For example, if we wanted to make a get request to the user's status page, we could create a div that has an hx-get attribute, and when the user clicks on the div, HTMX will cause the browser to make a get request to the URL user status, and then load the response into the same div. More about HTMX after this word from our sponsors. PHP Storm is a cutting edge IDE tailored specifically for PHP and web developers. If you haven't used it before, or it's been a while since you last tried it, now's the perfect time to check it out. PHP Storm has recently received significant performance enhancements and has an ever-expanding feature set. Now, I'm a recent convert to PHP Storm and I love it. One of my favorite features is the ability to rename a class and have PHP Storm find all the references and just automatically fix them for us. Curious to see if it's the right fit for you? Head to jetbrains.com slash phpstorm to learn more and try it out with a free 30-day trial. Code smarter, not harder. If we don't want to replace the contents of the same div, we can use the hx target attribute to define where the content should be placed after it's been retrieved. We can also use the hx swap attribute to define how the retrieved data will be placed in relation to the target element. The default is inner HTML, which will replace the inside of the target element, or outer HTML, which will replace the entire target element with the retrieved data. These will cover most of the common use cases, but there are other options like after begin, before begin, after end, and before end to add the retrieved content to the DOM instead of replacing it something. There is also a delete target that can be used to delete an element after the request is successful. Now, HTMX triggers AJAX requests using the natural event of an element, which includes the change event for inputs, text areas and selects, submit events for form elements, and click events for just about everything else. However, we can use the AJAX trigger attribute to specify which event will cause the AJAX request. For example, if we wanted to load our user status when the mouse entered our first div element, we would specify the AJAX trigger attribute with a value of mouse enter. We can also specify modifiers to the trigger that will cause the request to only fire once, only when the value changes, delay the request for a set period of time, or my favorite, throttle the request so we don't make multiple requests to the server. The throttle modifier will prevent extra events from occurring before the time limit has been reached. Any new events will be discarded. 
The HX trigger attribute also supports a reoccurring timer, so we can pull data instead of waiting for the user to act. One of the more interesting use cases for HDMX is the ability to load our entire website using a process called boosting. This will use an AJAX GET request to request a link and then replace the body of the site with a response. The boosting itself takes a snapshot of the DOM before it swaps out the new content, and then when the back button is used, it reloads the content from memory. If the content isn't found in the cache, it will request it again. To validate our inputs, HTMX uses the HTML5 validation API and will not allow a form to be submitted if a validatable input has data in it that is not valid. Lastly, HTMX has support for WebSockets and server-side events to provide even better dynamic support for our web applications. As a brief recap, HTMX is a library to give us easier access to JavaScript features inside of HTML. It's easy to install and easy to use. I hope you enjoyed our video. If so, make sure you subscribe, comment, share, and like as it does help others find us. Have you started using HTMX in your web application? Let us know in the comments below or shoot me a message on Twitter or phpc.social at Scott Keck Warren. I would love to hear how you're using this. As always, this is Scott Keck Warren for the PHP Architect channel signing off and reminding you to keep watching, keep coding, and keep reading. Thank you.